So thank you for uh, joining uh, my talk. Uh, the title is Generalizing Policy as Code for uh, Compliance Posture Management on Multi-Cloud Infrastructure. So today, I'd like to uh, share with you about the uh, value uh, of uh, automated and community-based compliance posture management uh, using compliance operator and the, uh, for managed multi-clusters with hyperswift. So this uh, presentation consists of three subtopics. One is uh, about hyperswift, which is an open source uh, managed cluster enablement tool. So you may uh, have an experience uh, using the, uh, some of the uh, managed tools, uh, but then I, let me introduce the um, open source to hyperswift. And second topic is uh, compliance operator and the compliance code which are uh, open source compliance posture management or CPM uh, tool and policy. So the uh, compliance posture management is the another important workload for the uh, many cluster or multi-cloud environment. So I'd like to talk about that the sec in the second topic. And finally, uh, this is the uh, new feature in uh, this year. So uh, adoption of the, the compliance operator to hypersift. Uh, for consistent compliance posture management. That the, the, uh, today's topics. Okay, uh, let me uh, start with Hypersift. Uh, Hypersift is an open source uh, managed cluster enabler which uh, focuses for the uh, Red Hat OpenShift clusters. And the, uh, you may have an experience uh, to use the uh, manage the cluster tools uh, offered by cloud service provider. So you can create or delete your cl uh, cluster by just clicking the button. And the, you may also have an experience that the, uh, you use the, some uh, standalone tools to manage the life cycle of the uh, managed cluster or manage the cluster like Terraform, uh, Argo CD, or Tekton through the uh, lifecycle management API like Kubernetes uh, cluster API. So the uh, HyperSafety is a similar tool for such uh, standalone tools. So you can uh, create or delete your own uh, cluster on your uh, bare metal or uh, the uh, infrastructure on the cloud service provider. And its uh, unique feature is a hosted control plane. So uh, I think it is better for me to introduce the what uh, uh, control plane means. So you, you may know that, but let me uh, introduce that. The, uh, the left-hand side uh, small box uh, shows the uh, inside of the standard Kubernetes cluster. Uh, it consists of two kind of kinds of components. Uh, one is control plane component and another is worker component. So uh, control plane, uh, in short, uh, the uh, infrastructure components for Kubernetes clusters, for example, API server, uh, ETCD, uh, pod scheduler, or uh, controller manager. So it is a, a very uh, important components and they run on master nodes. And other uh, workloads like users uh, application, like uh, database or web application, or like so on, uh, are classified as uh, worker component and they run on worker nodes. So in a standard Kubernetes cluster, uh, they, uh, they consist of uh, one cluster with the two kinds of the uh, nodes. But the, in the hyperswift environment, the uh, control plane uh, uh, hosted on another uh, cluster called the management cluster. So this, the uh, central uh, picture shows the uh, architecture of the hyperswift. If a user uh, attempts to create a cluster then the uh, worker will be created for that uh, cluster, but the, its control plane will be hosted in uh, another cluster. Uh, and the, the control plane uh, exposes its APIs to the worker component. So the uh, worker and the exposed APIs uh, virtually forms the uh, uh, Kubernetes cluster. So when I, uh, when a user attempts to create another cluster, then the another worker will be uh, deployed, but the uh, control plane will be deployed into the same uh, management cluster. So uh, in other words, the multiple control plane will be deployed in a single cluster. 
So what the benefit of the uh, hypersafe? So the first uh, benefit is that the, we can reduce uh, workload by uh, uh, centralized man management. I mean, for example, uh, an infrastructure engineer uh, need to uh, apply patch to the control plane. And in that case, the, uh, the infrastructure engineer uh, just need to uh, log in the uh, single management cluster and, uh, and uh, perform the management operations at a single uh, operation. So that's the uh, first benefit. And second benefit is that the, uh, the uh, managed cluster or user's cluster can be deployed quickly because the uh, basic components like uh, basic resources like network or storage have already been deployed as a part of management cluster. And the, uh, what we need, we sh uh, need to do is just uh, deploying the uh, control plane component ports like API server and so on. So it uh, can uh, reduce the uh, time for uh, deployment. And finally, the uh, improved resource uh, utilization. As uh, similar to the uh, virtual machines and the virtual machine monitors, uh, many uh, control, control planes can uh, be packed into a single uh, cluster and it uh, improves the uh, resource utilization. So that's the uh, advantages of hypershift and we can uh, uh, leverage it to, uh, how to say, optimize the uh, managed cluster uh, workloads. And what uh, other unavoidable uh, workloads we can deduce? That is the uh, compliance posture management. Uh, the compliance posture management is the uh, process to ensure uh, that an IT system complies with internal or external policies. So you may think about that the, what the difference between security and compliance. So uh, compliance policies often contain uh, many uh, security rules like the minimum password length should be uh, longer than eight characters or the, uh, the uh, encryption key, the length of encryption keys should be uh, larger than uh, 1024 bits or larger. But the, uh, the important difference is that uh, in the compliance process, we, uh, not, we uh, need to not only uh, configure the, the IT system secured, but also we need to ensure or check that the uh, system is configured as expected. That's the difference. So the uh, compliance posture management uh, consists of four uh, steps. Uh, let's go through uh, with example uh, policy. Uh, this is a part, uh, one of the rules in CIS benchmark for Kubernetes. Uh, in this rule, uh, API server must not run with option insecure bind address. In this case, uh, first step is collecting fact. So fact uh, is, uh, can be thought of as a configuration for the IT system. And the, in this case, the facts can be co uh, collected by this uh, file pass in the master node. And then the, the second step is applying policy. The uh, rule say the uh, string insecure bind address should not exist in this uh, fact file. And the uh, results should be reviewed by the uh, compliance engineer and then uh, fix violation if uh, this kind of violation uh, is found. So the, uh, in the compliance posture management, uh, it is imp uh, important that the uh, automation and uh, open community-based uh, technology play important roles, especially for cloud-native uh, compliance posture management. Why? So why automation matter? The, uh, as you uh, may uh, use the uh, cloud-native uh, tools like uh, DevOps and GitOps-based uh, tools, it uh, frequently or continuously changes the IT system. And therefore, we need to uh, perform this process uh, frequently or uh, continuously. In that case, uh, the, uh, how to say that, uh, legacy process like uh, monthly or uh, quarterly or annually, such uh, annual uh, check doesn't matter. So we need to uh, perform a frequent check. So de therefore, automation is essential. And the second uh, is that open uh, community base. So why uh, open matters? So uh, as I wrote the external policies, so the uh, many uh, laws and industry standards exist 
And that, uh, common, common, that can be commonly applicable to uh, many organizations. For example, in the uh, financial company in Japan, uh, such a uh, organization need to comply with the, uh, the uh, security standard given by the uh, Japanese uh, financial agency. So such, and in, in addition to that, uh, infrastructure, infrastructure is now common, you know, the Q Kubernetes. Uh, we can, uh, we use Kubernetes as a uh, standardized infrastructure and therefore uh, we can apply the uh, same policy to uh, similar or uh, identical infrastructure over multiple, uh, multiple organizations. And therefore, the uh, open community is very important for this uh, topic. Okay, uh, let's uh, move on to the uh, concrete uh, tools. The first one is compliance operator, which is an open source compliance posture check engine. So this uh, is an operator, Kubernetes operator, but they, uh, inside of the operator, there are many mature technologies, but it is wrapped by cloud native technologies. So this uh, figure is the uh, same one in the previous slide, but the, uh, these steps consist of mu uh, multiple uh, techniques. The, uh, for co collecting fact, the uh, cloud native technologies like Cube API or uh, storage access to the host uh, will be used to collect the fact, for example, uh, file in the master node. And then the, uh, up for the applying policy, the uh, very uh, mature technology is used for 2008. This is the uh, open uh, SCAP uh, uh, studied in 2008. And the policy is, is uh, written in XCCDF, which was uh, standardized in 2005. And the, uh, to review the result, we can use the both uh, mature and, and cloud native technologies uh, and the XCDF, and we can also use Prometheus metrics. And also, the, some of the uh, fix, violation fix, fix process is automated with the Kubernetes manifest or Ansible playbook. So with uh, compliance operator, uh, we can uh, gain several benefits. The first uh, biggest one uh, is that we don't need to write policies from scratch. So we can use existing uh, XCCD rules, and, and I will uh, introduce it in detail in the next slide, which is called compliance as code. And also we can integrate it with uh, both cloud native tools and legacy tools. For example, we can uh, deploy and configure a compliance operator uh, with uh, cloud native tools, including operator like Cycle Manager and the Argo CD or Tecton. And as I uh, told in the uh, review result, uh, observability tools can be used for the uh, reviewing the result. So the compliance operator exposes its result as uh, Prometheus metrics, and we can use uh, Prometheus over the uh, Grafana for the uh, graphical user, user interface or dashboard. And also uh, we can uh, use uh, the uh, mature or legacy technologies uh, like uh, XML, XSLT or CSS to uh, review the results through the uh, browser or the uh, pass it to another uh, tools via through the XML technology. And the uh, compliance as code is a, a set of uh, check rules uh, which are maintained by the open community. And it uh, consists of the uh, rules and the remediation script. And the rules are, are written in a uh, uh, YAML file as uh, shown in the bottom of this uh, slide. So uh, it consists of location for fact, for example, in this case. So this is the uh, same one that I introduced previous uh, slide, so disable use of insecure bind address. So in this case, the uh, fact can be collected through the uh, Kubernetes API with this uh, URL, and the, it contains, also contains a logic for a check. Uh, in this case, the string insecure bind address should not exist in, the, uh, in this uh, fact data. So uh, it supports uh, the whole infrastructure. I mean, the, uh, it uh, contains the operating system rules and the middleware and application rules, including the uh, OpenShift cluster. And it supports various regulations. Uh, for example, in case of the clusters, uh, NIST SP853, uh, CS benchmark, P2 
PCI DSS are supported. So they, all of them are very popular uh, compliance uh, regulations or standards in the uh, IT industry. So uh, let me uh, sh share the uh, architecture slide uh, of the compliance operator working with uh, compliance as a code. So red rectangle uh, represents a component components of compliance operator. Uh, first, the resource collector uh, collects the facts from cluster, which is indicated in the location in the policy, I mean compliance as a code. And then uh, facts will be scanned uh, by the uh, compliance operator with check logic provided by policy. And the uh, result uh, will be uh, consumed by various tools, including the metrics uh, exporter and report generator and the uh, rem autom automated remediator for clusters. Okay, so far I have uh, talked about two uh, kinds of tools. One, one is HyperShift for managed cluster, and another is the compliance operator uh, for the compliance posture management. So the uh, next challenge for us is, uh, you know, the, we'd like to apply the compliance operator uh, not only for the standalone clusters, but also for HyperShift managed clusters. So the challenge here is how to support the uh, hosted control plane feature. Uh, as I uh, introduced in the uh, second slide, the uh, managed clusters uh, under the HyperShift uh, are split into two, how to say, two or multiple uh, parts. Uh, one is the uh, clusters, and another is management cluster. Uh, and the uh, control planes are hidden from the uh, user's cluster. It just exposes the APIs, and the, the control plane components themselves are hidden. And the compliance operator running in the uh, user's cluster can't access the uh, control plane uh, itself. So we need to uh, use another compliance operator instance on the management cluster. And the, this instance uh, need to support multiple control planes on a single cluster, uh, while standard compliance operator just need to check a single uh, control plane. So that's the uh, challenge. But the we, if we can generalize this compliance operator, both for the uh, worker and the host, uh, this uh, uh, hosted control planes, then we can uh, uh, enable consistent compliance posture management. I mean, uh, we can use same tool and same policy, so the uh, result of check can be sort of uh, very co uh, consistent result. Okay, the, uh, this is how uh, such a, a feature is achieved. Uh, actually, this is what I contributed to the open community, uh, the adoption of compliance operator to HyperShift hosted control planes. So the uh, most important thing is that the, uh, each control plane is, <laughs> how to say, en encapsulated. So uh, control, one control plane for one managed cluster is uh, located in a single namespace. So if there are two control planes, there are two uh, specific namespaces for each control plane. So in a standard uh, rule, the uh, namespace name is hard-coded, but the, uh, we need to uh, replace them with place for, place for, for holders like this. And some of the uh, resource name is uh, changed, and therefore we also need to uh, replace them with placeholders in the compliance as a code rules. And also, we need to add a uh, runtime parameter assignment feature to compliance operator. So uh, when compliance operator instance on the managed cluster try to perform a check, then uh, we can assign uh, we can assign uh, specific parameter for specific, specific control planes. For example, the namespace name is CP1, or the, for the scan for the control plane 2, the uh, namespace name might be CP2, or like so on. So that's the uh, new functionality. And the, with these, uh, with these uh, features, uh, we can uh, apply the uh, compliance operators, automated compliance posture management to the uh, managed clusters powered by HyperShift. So th these are key takeaways. So first I have introduced the HyperShift, one of the uh, managed cluster uh, enablement tool, and then uh, introduced the uh, compliance posture management and the concrete tools 
uh, compliance operator and compliance as a code. And the, uh, I have also uh, mentioned about the importance of the open community for this, uh, uh, this uh, operation. And then I have introduced the uh, adoption of compliance operator to Hypercell. So thank you so much. So that's all uh, from me. Uh, please ask me any question about my presentation. Thank you. I have actually multiple questions. <laughs> So like my first question is like is HyperShift and your uh, compliance operator only works with OpenShift or it can work with uh, normal Kubernetes as well? Thank you, very good question. So uh, actually it uh, is a Kubernetes operator and it can run on any Kubernetes clusters and you can check the uh, underlying operating system with compliance operator, but the, uh, for the, uh, the check for Kubernetes, uh, it uh, only uh, support the HyperShift. Okay. And uh, is there anything like uh, it can check during the deployment as well, or like it will check only after the deployment is done and it will fetch metrics? Uh, sorry, could you say again? Uh, like when you say Prometheus and metrics, right? Like things oh. which are deployed, right? After that only it can scan and it can filter out the things, right? Like saying that, okay, this is not matching the compliance, right? But if I can catch those things during the deployment itself, is that possible, like uh, using some kind of GitHub actions or like you know something like that? Uh, no uh, predefined uh, trigger or like something like that uh, doesn't exist in the compliance operator. But uh, the output is created not only for the Prometheus, uh, Prometheus metrics, but also it, uh, the custom resource uh, generated for the results. So maybe uh, we can use some hook for Kubernetes resources to trigger some other actions like GitHub action. Okay, so means like after deployment only is it possible, but not during the deployment or like it can catch. What, what, what deployment I mean? Uh, like when we deploy applications, uh -huh. right? Like, like you know, um, the deployment service, stateful set or config map secrets, right? So during the deployment, like, you know, while it's happening, can it stop saying that, okay, you are doing something wrong, don't push the code. I see, yeah, I see, yeah. Mm, actually, the answer is no. So this checks the runtime. So I mean, the maybe you're, uh, uh, th what you want to do is the uh, prevent. Correct, like admission control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so th that uh, uh, operation should be done with some other tools like the on the uh, GitHub, you can use Travis or uh, Samsung webhook, and when you would like to prevent on the Kubernetes, some, uh, yeah, so the uh, uh, co controller like Kiberno or uh, OPA uh, can work for that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you for uh, joining my session. <laughs>